Hi, in this video, we're going to be, this series of videos, we're going to be working through a GCSE paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Each of the videos is going to be about 20, 30 minutes or so. It should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, this is the final video where we're looking at the paper and in the previous video we completed through to question number 23 so we're going to be looking at question number 24 onwards. Okay, so question number 24, it says show that x squared plus 6x equals 1 and we've got this um, square or this rectangle, it's a square actually, that's been broken up into four separate pieces. So let's look at each of those pieces in turn. So we've got A, uh, let's say this is B and then C and then D. Okay, so the area of the whole square is going to be 10 centimeters squared. So let's look at the area of each of the individual pieces. Well, I've got A, which is going to be equal to 3 times 3, and that's going to be equal to a total area of 9 centimeters. Okay, then I've got B. Well, that's going to equal, a little bit tricky on the screen, but 3 times x. So this is 3. And this is x at the top, so 3 times x, okay, and that's going to be equal to 3x. Okay, and then I've also got c, which is x times 3, so I'm just going to write that on the screen. So c is going to be x times 3. Um, I would still write it as x times 3, even though when I multiply it out, it's going to be 3x, just because it's easier then to see. And then finally, I've got d which is going to be x times x, which is going to equal x squared. Okay, now hopefully you can see that. You've got x at the very top. This is x, and then you've also got x here. Okay, um, please do try to uh, download or stop the video and have a go at each of these questions. Okay, now when I add up all of those, what I've got and the way I've written it, it just allows me to add them up as x squared plus 6x plus 9. And we mustn't forget, that's going to equal to an area of 10. OK, because that's what it says, the area of the square is 10. So therefore, we've got to really manipulate this to make it look like this. OK, so uh, if I just write that out, I'm going to write it out as x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 10. So I'm just going to write it the other way around. And then really all I do is I take 9 from both sides and I can write that as x squared plus 6x equals 1, which is the show that they've wanted from the first part of the question, or from the part of the question. Okay, let's move on then to question number 25. Now, question number 25 uses a couple of skills. It's really mainly Pythagoras here. So, um, if we look at this particular frame, it's made from five straight pieces of metal. So the thing that we need to calculate is going to be this length x, which is effectively the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So what I can do then is just use Pythagoras to do that. So I'm just going to make a note that it's Pythagoras. And what I'm going to say is x squared equals 12 squared plus 5 squared. If you want to write out a squared equals b squared plus c squared, that's perfectly fine as well. But in this particular case, it should be a fairly straightforward calculation. And what we finally work out at is that x squared is 169, therefore when I square root it, it's going to equal to 13. Now, I know it's non-calculator, but um, 169 is something that you might be able to just uh, guess at as 13 and then just check. So what we're saying is when we look at the value of x, it's actually going to be equal to 13. So now we've got our five straight pieces of metal. We've got 12 at the top here, 5 at the sides, and then 12 at the bottom, and x for the hypotenuse, or 13 for the hypotenuse. So when I I add all of those up, I've got a total frame length of being equal to 12 
plus 5, plus 12, plus 5, plus 13, and that's going to equal 47. Now it says the weight of the metal is 1.5 kilograms per meter. Okay, so therefore the total weight which we're being asked to calculate is going to be equal to 47 multiplied by 1.5 and again you'll need to do that calculation but it should give you 70.5 kilograms which would be the answer to that particular question. Okay let's move on then to question number 26 uh, okay and it says the equation of a line is that and then the equation of another line is that show that the two lines are parallel well if they're parallel it basically means that it's the same gradient okay now as you know what we need with a line is for it to be written in the form y equals mx plus c where m is the gradient and in providing we can get both lines looking like that then that will give us uh, the ability to compare the gradient. So if we look at line L1, well it's already in that form. That's y equals 3x minus 2. So therefore 3 equals the gradient for line L1. Okay, let's have a look then at L2. Now the problem is, is that it's been written um, as 3y minus 9x plus 5 equals 0. Well, that's not particularly helpful to us. What we need to do is put it in the y equals mx plus c form. So we need to isolate and make y the subject of this particular formula. So if I move the minus 9x and plus 5 over to the other side, I'm going to get 3y equals 9x minus 5. And then I'm going to divide through by 3. I get y equals 9x minus 5 divided by 3. Now don't forget, it's dividing each of the terms by 3. So 9x divided by 3 is going to be 3x and then minus 5 divided by 3 is going to be minus 5 over 3. However, that's not that important to me because in this particular case now, I've got 3 equals the gradient, so therefore I've proved that the lines are parallel because they've both got the same gradient. Okay, let's move on then to the very final question on this particular um, paper which is going to be a question on vectors. Now not everybody will have done vectors but it will give you some idea of how vectors work and with these sorts of questions it's just worthwhile just spending a bit of time with them. Okay so it says uh, part A find in terms of B the vector DB. Okay well the thing about vectors is that if the length is the same and it's in the same direction and it means this vector will also be B. So therefore what we can say is that vector DB is going to be vector DO plus vector OB. Okay, well DO is going to be B and OB is also going to be B therefore vector DB is going to equal 2B. OK, now, again, if you're not entirely sure of what I'm talking about, please do let me know in the comments. And I do have some worksheets on vectors that you could have a look at. OK, so we're going to have a look then at vector AB. And I'm going to have to scroll this up just a little bit and then we'll go back to it. So vector AB, well, that's going to be equal to vector AO, which I know, plus vector OB, which I also know. Because vector AO is minus A and vector OB. B, which we've already done is B. So therefore vector AB is B minus A. Now I'll just go back and just check that with you. So if we look at this AO is actually A but heading in the opposite direction therefore it's going to be a negative and OB is going to be as we did before this vector along here which is value of B. Okay so very final question is find in terms of A and B the vector AD. So what we're looking at is this vector along here. Okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go D to O and then I'm going to go O to A. So let's just write that out. So I've got vector AD is going to be equal to vector AO 
plus vector OD and that's going to be negative A plus negative B so it's got negative A negative B and that would be vector AD so a little bit more problematic if you're not used to these sorts of questions um, but again in the comments please do let me know okay hopefully that's been helpful to you please do uh, subscribe to the site and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video